The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. And let them return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Good morning, and uh, welcome uh, to all who are uh, gathered online primarily uh, in these uh, COVID days. Uh, we have uh, on site the, the bare minimum required to do a service basically, and I appreciate um, your presence uh, on site as well. And thank you to Sarah Jarvis for managing uh, the online community for us today. We will pray this day a morning prayer from the book of uh, Common Prayer, uh, the Canadian edition, 1962, <laughs> um, for those watching from afar. We'll continue on page four of your prayer book. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. 
O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Praise ye the Lord. And together, let us pray the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your forebears tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts for they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The reading from the psalm is taken from Psalm 72. Hear now this selection. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he deliver the poor who cry out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. 
of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Let us say together the Tadea, found on page seven of your prayer book. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty. Thine honorable, true, and only son, also the holy comforts, the comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver us, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory to, to come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. I invite you to rise as you're able for a reading from the gospel. The second lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter beginning at the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. 
Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go also and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continuing on page nine of your prayer book, let us pray together the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we, being saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which we swear to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the queen. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. 
eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, friends. To the thousands gathered here, all you people online wish you were packed in. There's hardly a seat available. So we are here for the week of the description of this all week's parish, our weekly English parish here in the English parish of Canada. A number of folks today join us online from the points of Canada and the state, and perhaps even all of Ontario, for those of you who are watching us live, lighting you up in the UK. A number of you will be watching us post. So, the women, here's the essential meaning of their meaning according to Miriam Webster Dictionary. One, a Christian festival held on January 6th in honor of the coming of three kings to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Two, a moment in which we suddenly feel our hands crumpled in a wish that they're their way. And three, today in the year 2022, when I made my Okay, no, I did not make it in the area of the Nonetheless, number three is true. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. The Gate of the Year is a poem by Minnie Louise Haskins that was set to music for choir by William Harris. And my friend present today, David Carl, shared this via email on New Year's Eve day. It was an especially well-timed email, David. For me, as I contemplated my profession to the Order of the Julian of Norwich as an oblate, another new beginning. After a year-long aspirancy, a period of reflection and making ready in the heart, in which I suddenly see and understand something in a new and in a very clear way. That is my place in Christ, in this local parish, 
as a working artist and in my calling as a lay member of the Order of Julian. The poem verse read today also speaks to me and I think to each of us as we enter yet another period of increased uncertainty in these long, long, extended, exhausting, exacerbated pandemic days. Three years of pandemic, enough already we cry. Even those of us who felt from the start that it would not be a short affair did not imagine three years of dark uncertainty and death. On the private OJN, that's Order of Julian, on the private OJN bulletin board, my fellow associate in the UK, Andrew Dickey, noted that the poem was made famous by King George the the, the sixth at his first Christmas message of World War II in 1939, when things, as Andrew says, seemed very grim for Britain. Things do seem grim right now because of the pandemic, yes, but also because of other personal trials we face that are only made worse, maybe not directly, maybe directly, but certainly indirectly, by hospital wait times, delayed elective surgery, lack of product of all kinds, by increased cost of living, by social unrest, by the weariness of conspiracy theories, misinformation, fake news, separation from family, death of family and friends, our kids and our grandkids' futures. Well, the list does go on. Sheer fatigue can have us hanging by a tether such that even those very things epiphany is about, hope, discovery, light, promise, are hard to fully embrace. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick, says a reading from Isaiah that accompanies today. Thick, dark, yeah, we get that. Isaiah declares that against the odds of human darkness, the Lord will rise upon you. He will, he does, and his glory will appear over you, over us. The Hebrew people had seen dark times, long dark times, and much of it brought upon them by their own actions. When this promised one, this king, this eternal king would come to them and dwell with them, then the text says, you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice because of abundance, the sheer abundance of so many wonderful things, almost too much to hope for. We get that too. The psalmist encourages, in this time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The Psalms are known for hyperbole, yes, but here is the language of holy exaggeration that is all about no mere temporal abundance, but is a lasting fullness of everything we could ever want or need. And it's present now. Sounds miraculous. Too miraculous, maybe. A miracle is often described as being when heaven breaks into our present. When eternal life, eternal realities are made real in the midst of our temporal reality. Against all odds, the already and the not yet. It is interesting to me that church celebrates the feast of the holy innocence before Epiphany, when it is Epiphany that comes first and sets in full motion the darkness of that hour. It is the coming of the Magi to worship the light, who is the Christ child, that sets in motion a mad, jealous darkness that will result, as we know, in the slaughter of all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under. The heart cries madness or horrific contrivance, conniving, controversy, deception, the jealous wickedness of one tiny mind, one fear-filled despotic puppet King Herod that would cost countless innocent lives altering the course of that local society. How dark of a spirit was that time? A pandemic of dark, sick fear in Herod's head spread by, by his power throughout his domain. And yet God had only just arrived. 
It is hard to hold these seeming opposites in tension, the revealing of God incarnate, the dark death darkness of evil incarnate. It is hard for us to hold in our minds, at least it's hard for me to hold in my mind, the opposite tensions of the realities of this present pandemic dark time and the reality that the child is among us and in his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more, says the psalmist. Well, these are the Christ child's days. And yet there it is, a new understanding, an epiphany, the already but the not yet. It has come, he has come, he is coming. His abundance of life eternal has come. His abundance of life eternal is coming. You know, it would be easier to give up than to press on. Now, if I was back in my Pentecostal circles, I'd be looking to the amen corner for an amen. I think the amen corner is empty today. I mean, I could take another whatever number of minutes and tell you my personal story of how we got to here, here in Windsor, here at All Saints. I could detail it, how it was through no small number of trials and personal loss that I came to a place where I told people many times, not only did I never want to be in ministry again, never again to be a clergy person, but how I was only a Christian because I could not not be otherwise. I wanted many times to just give up. It is in fact not weak to hold on to faith. It is very hard indeed to press on, to hold out for hope in the dark, especially personal darkness. It is tough to find reasons to remain a Christian, especially when so many Christians, they will remain unnamed, give a person plenty of reasons to just quit this game. But you don't want to hear about that. and I don't want to talk about it. And it's not a game. It is life, and life is tough. Daily, life is often dark, or at least super, super gray. Yet there is a God in the darkness. Indeed, he made darkness his covering around him, his canopy thick clouds with water. It is famously attributed to Vincent van Gogh that he said, I often think that the night is more alive and more richly colored than the day. That's kind of miraculous, no? Considering miracles, epiphanies, think about this. Think about these abundant riches in Christ Jesus that Paul spoke of to the Ephesians. The miracle of babies being born during the pandemic. Well, the first part of that makes sense. There's not a lot else to do. But the very fact that a baby would be born, life comes in the midst of death. Our granddaughter was born in February 2020. The miracle of marriages that last 10 or 20 or 40 and beyond years because of the constant hard work, sacrifice, forgiveness, unselfishness, love. The miracle of vaccines. The miracle of Zoom, even though we are very weary of it at times. The miracle of snow or sun, rain, sleep, walking, waking, laughing, the wet nose of a beloved dog. And well, here the list also goes on. All these things, these blessings are not hidden blessings, but rather are so in our face daily that we can tend to miss them for what they are, the miracle of abundance. The miracle of this abundance of miracles, an epiphany, a realization, the Christ child King is with us right now in the darkness, bringing us through it. St. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus about the big reveal. So spoiler alert, the mystery has been revealed. Jesus King has come already and his abundance of life already in the midst of this present darkness. It is for absolutely everyone. Even the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, Paul proclaims, astounding his listeners. Can we lay hold of the reality of epiphany this season? If we cannot do that today, that, that's okay. We have pretty much a whole month ahead of us. Jesus has already come. He is coming, yes, 
and he has already come. Epiphany in biblical terms means manifestation, showing forth, that is, making known. The gospel says the Magi saw the child. They represented in their very persons the mystery that Paul says has been revealed, namely that the gospel good of God is for every person of all nations and people groups. The psalm reminds us that in the time of that child that is now, already and not yet, right now is the time of the righteous flourishing and of an abundance of peace. Isaiah says, so arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord, that is his honor, his full goodness of being, etc., has risen upon you. So what would it look like if you and I lived into this season of epiphany in a very new, a very clear way? Understanding that the mystery of Christ, of God's loving care for us, for the world, for our family and neighbor, is revealed not in spite of the current darkness, but abundantly, specifically amidst this dark. What would that look like? How might that impact how you think or feel or pray or give or hope daily? What would to show forth be like if we indeed hoped against hope, saw the miracles for what they are, not a lame, fanciful, or blind hope, but a grounded in the revealed mystery of Christ, child, king, way? How might that change our thought patterns, the way we speak with one another, the way we live with one another. What if the gift, this epiphany, were to bring King Jesus a bold and confidence through faith in Christ way of living? That's the way that Paul spoke of, a bold confidence in God's kind of abundance. That would be the mystery of Christ breaking into our present. So today, since 2018, December 10, I am an associate in the Order of Julian of Norwich, which is a contemplative monastic order of the Episcopal Church. We are two branches, nuns living in community and oblates and associates dispersed in all walks of life. And together we are committed to intercession and conversion of life following the teaching of St. Julian of Norwich. Essential to the call of an oblate are vows that are lifelong and thus constantly challenging. Oblates pray morning and evening prayer, I add Compline, by happy obligation, spend at least three hours a week in still prayer. I want to tell you that is a challenge. Make an annual silent retreat of several days. Engage in a lifelong meditation on Julian of Norwich's revelations of divine love. Practice fasting according to the order's rule. Well, that list goes on too. Let me tie all of this together in three endings. Ending one, recalling our readings and thoughts from today, hear now the final short scene from a play about the life of Julian called simply Julian that accurately conveys the words and the theology of Julian of Norwich. One woman is on stage. She approaches the audience. Life is a precious thing to me, and a little thing. My life is a little thing. When it will end here is God's secret, and the world is a little thing, like a hazelnut in his or her hand. But it is ever keeping, ever loving, it is ever making. How should anything be amiss? Yes, all shall be well and all will be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Kind friends, I pray God grant you all your good wishes, desires, and dreams. It is all in the choosing. She turns and starts to exit, stops, and smilingly turns to the audience to deliver the final line of Julian. It is all in the asking. 
ending two. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. And now ending three, my prayer for us. May you beloved of God, be keenly aware of our Lord Jesus blessing today, of God's presence in you and through you each day and on into the Holy Ghost's brilliantly dark mystery of tomorrow. And may you thrive. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Owen. Continuing on page 12 of your prayer book, let us come to God in prayer. O Lord, our heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in wealth and health long to live, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, and finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite um, uh, Owen to stand at a safe distance, sorry. <laughs> um, and I invite all of you to turn to the order of service uh, distributed here on site or uh, via email. Uh, as we bear witness to and participate in um, uh, Owen Swain's profession of oblate vows in the order of Julian of Norwich. Dear friends in Christ, we are gathered here today to examine Owen Swain and to witness his solemn profession of vows as an oblate of the order of Julian of Norwich. In December 2018, Owen made promises as an affiliate of the Order of Julian, which is renewed annually. Today we witness not a next step, but an equal yet different calling as an oblate, which is a lifetime profession. The Lady Julian is the inspiration and patroness of the Order of Julian of Norwich, which is committed to our, her ideals of contemplative prayer, intercession, service, and spiritual guidance. As the three windows of Mother Julian's anchor hold cell opened, one to the church altar, one to the room of her lay sisters, and one to the public lane, so the life of the whole order is directed to God and shaped in three interconnected ways. By the life of the nuns in the monastery, by the life and fellowship of the wider community of oblates and associates, and by the corporate prayer of the whole order, which though dispersed, lifts up one voice in praise of God and intercession for the church and world. Oblates of the order of Julian of Norwich are a vital witness to the church and the world of the unity between the contemplative and active life, and the truth that all our ministry to one another emerges from our in intentional relationship with God. The call to the life of an oblate then is not to be taken lightly. For it is a call to a life of 
holy example in prayer, discipline, and love. So Owen, please step forward. I call upon the congregation here present and uh, around the world uh, to bow their heads in silence for a moment of still prayer on behalf of Owen, who today offers himself to God. The sponsor will present the aspirant on behalf of the prior of oblates and the whole order. On behalf of the Reverend Gordon Chastain, OBGN, Owen's aspirant seat chaplain, and acknowledging the continuity of the roles, the Reverend Maurice Restivo and the Reverend Riley McLaren and Mother Johannes Jordan, AOJN, have had in Owen's early path as an affiliate of the Order of Julian, we present to you Owen Swain to make his solemn profession of oblate vows in the Order of Julian of Norwich. Do you believe him to be suited to this calling? We do. Has he fulfilled all prerequisites and served a proper duration as an oblate aspirant? He has. My brother, what is it that you desire? I desire the mercy of God and the prayers of my sisters and brothers as an oblate of the Order of Julian of Norwich. Do you believe that you are truly called by God to this vocation as an oblate? I believe I am so called. Do you now here in the presence of God and of this company commit yourself to the trust and responsibility of oblation? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction of your prior and the guardian of the order? I will. Is it your intention faithfully to live the oblate rule? That is my intention. Across from each other. <laughs> In the presence of God and of this company, do you solemnly undertake to follow the oblate's rule of stability? I do with the help of God and prayer of my sisters and brothers. Do you solemnly undertake to follow the oblate's rule of conversion of life? I do with the help of God and prayer of my sisters and brothers. Do you solemnly undertake to follow the oblate's rule of obedience? May the Lord God, who has given you the will to do these things, grant you also the grace and the power to perform them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, accept, we pray, the profession of this, your servant Owen, who, in, who following the example of the Lady Julian, and of countless others of your saints, now offers himself by these vows of stability, conversion of life, and obedience to serve you in a life of simplicity, courteous love, and prayer. Bestow upon him your Holy Spirit to dwell in him richly, to give him steadfastness of purpose, and to sanctify him more fully, and to guide him surely into paths of service and witness to the honor and glory of your great name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Owen, we accept you as an oblate of the Order of Julian of Norwich. Receive this habit worn along with the medallion you received when you made your promises as an affiliate 
in 2019. As the symbol of your profession of these vows in response to Christ's call to you. And as a sign of your commitment to serve Christ and his people. And receive this manual as a guide and support to your vocation as a Julian Aubrey. God of your goodness, give me yourself, for you are enough to me, and I can ask for nothing less that is to your glory. And if I ask anything less, I shall still be in want, for only in you have I all. Through your risen Son and the Spirit of love, who together with you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, and arise. <laughs> <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us continue in prayer. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. And finally, we commend to thy goodness, O Lord, all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired, naming them aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we that unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them granting them in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able for a blessing. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day, Owen upon you for eternity. Amen. And together, let us close with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.